will start warming up next week by Thursday, if you look at the weather reports. And at that time, uh, that's when we start sh should start picking up melt rates to about an inch. Another thing with a giant snowpack like we have this year is it's, it's frozen up. It's uh, not isothermal, meaning there's cold pockets in there. So if you get melt on the very surface of the snow and it starts to infiltrate into the snowpack, it'll hit those cold pockets and just freeze up again. So you don't really have much coming out until it's 32 degrees Fahrenheit, top to bottom, or zero degrees centigrade. And once that, that melt from the top can trickle through and make it to the surface, and now you've got really good conditions so it doesn't evaporate, it doesn't transpire, it just makes its way into the creek. It's very efficient. Our problems in the low years is we melt early. So it's, it becomes isothermal way too soon. You get melt water coming out of the snowpack, and then it just evaporates. Plants come back early. They pull it up in the roots and they transpire out in the leaves, and you lose it. Mm -hmm. We could use a little of that, but it's not going to happen this year. There is just snow at, at those elevations down to 68, 6,500 feet, even 6,200 feet at some of the north facing. So, I mean, it's good for water supply, but now how's it going to come off is the question. Yeah, we're showing images of, uh, of uh, Immigration Creek and the flooding that was there. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. this past week, but the week before. Yeah. I mean, obviously, this was huge and, and way more than the capacity of the infrastructure there. Do you anticipate that's going to be widespread in all the creeks running down? It depends how it comes yeah. off. We've had really big years in the past, and if you can have a delicate balance of, of temperature and cloud cover, you can bring this off without much problems. The problem lies in our cities and places where we build homes and our infrastructure, while there's been great improvements through Salt Lake City from when you look at 1983, they've engineered this really well. It's much better than what I remember when I used to work for the Weather Service, but most likely we're going to have some problems somewhere. There's going to be a log or a, a, a something, a root ball that's going to get stuck under a pipe and we're going to flood a road here and there. If we are at peak flow uh, melt sometime in late May, and then we start getting thunderstorms or a widespread long duration rain event and that's going to just put down a lot of rain, an inch or two rain or more, then we could have some serious problems. But you have to weigh how it's coming off and are we going to see that. So far we've been very fortunate with no rain. We had a brief warm up, but it's just due to the crazy storm we had two weeks prior. We had snow down to 5,000 feet on both south and north aspects. And that's what produced uh, the flows out of emigration. Hmm. We've melted that off. So now we're seeing uh, what's going to happen with the warm up come mid next week. So what what would worst case scenario look like, first of all, and then we'll <laughs> go into best case scenario. So worst case scenario is we start melting snow at, at two inches per day. We crank the temperatures up to 80, 90 degrees. We have bright sunshine with no clouds and then we get a long duration, widespread, low elevation rain event that just soaks everything. That's when So we're... high temperatures followed by rain, mm -hmm. that's what we don't want. Yeah, because think of uh, the mountains right now, uh, or in, in about you know a week from now, they're gonna be putting out an inch per day melt uh, all across where you see snow. So under there, an inch of water is coming down and, it's, and the, the channels can hold that. What if we rain two inches widespread across the entire basin now theoretically we've got melt rates up to three inches per hour the channels aren't used to that they don't they don't they're not formed by flows they see like that uh and then put on top of that consecutive 24-hour melt cycles we'll just have too much water mm -hmm. the most optimal scenario is we pick it up next week we have melt rates of about an inch to an inch and a half per day for about a week and then maybe slow it down a little bit, let it drain out a little bit, maybe two days of cloud cover, maybe a little cooler temperatures, then bring it back up, pick the melt up to an inch and a half per day and then slow it down again. Yeah. Pick it up again until we're basically out of low and mid elevation snow. Even if you have high elevation snow, it's still, when the, you think of the mountains, you know, the aerial extent, it gets smaller as the higher you go until you're standing on top of the peaks around there. High elevation snow is still okay because then you don't have as much snow as that mid elevation. And right now, that's the problem because we have so much snow at that mid elevation, 7,000 feet, like you mentioned earlier. 